Hey guys, Zach here, Small Town Bourbon. <clears throat> this is continuing on part two of my Bourbon 101, Bourbon for Beginners. So if you haven't seen the first part, I do recommend going and watching that first. I talk more about just how to understand what they're saying on the, on the labels and stuff. This, this time, part two, I think I'm going to focus more on questions about drinking bourbon or smelling bourbon. I'm going to try to get right into it here. So the first thing I want to talk about is does the glass matter? The type of glass you drink your bourbon in, does it matter? I would say everybody has their own opinion about this, that no, not really. I would find the glass you like the best, and that's what I would drink. Just drink out of whatever you want to. These are the three that I use the most. This is a Glencairn. This one is called a Canadian Glencairn or Glencairn Mixer. And then your classic rocks glass. The big upside everybody says about the Glencairn is because of its shape. It makes it easier to pick up notes on the nose when you're smelling it because it like funnels those vapors up through the small opening. And I do think it does that. <sighs> the downside to it for me is it, it just doesn't feel like a glass. It's really tiny. And the opening is so small when I drink out of it, you see, it hits me right here on the tip of my nose. So I have to like lean way back to drink out of it, which isn't a big deal. Just at home, and I use it a good bit in videos, but at home, when I'm just hanging out, I just do not like it. <laughs> I hardly ever pour myself something in that. The one I use the most is the Canadian Glencairn because it seems like kind of the happy medium between a Glencairn and a rocks glass. It's a little bigger, a little, a little beefier. It feels more like a cup in your hand. It seems a little more stable to me with a bigger bottom as, a, as opposed to that little tiny bottom. And I do still feel like you get some of the effects from the shape of it as far as smelling it. And you know, your smell is connected to your taste, so it can in turn affect the way it tastes. But there's nothing wrong with a rocks glass. If that's what you like, I mean, they're sturdy. They're uh, everywhere. You know, if you go to a restaurant, most of the time you're gonna get something in a rocks glass. You can put ice in them, you can make cocktails in them. They are pretty versatile and there's nothing wrong with them if that's what you wanna drink out of. I wouldn't be afraid to try other glasses to see which one you prefer. But so up to you there. Now, I know I do not think it really matters much. Some people get really upset about which glass you drink out of. So while we're talking about the rocks, drinking bourbon on ice. I don't do it a lot. I do it sometimes. Sometimes I enjoy it. To me, I feel like putting a bourbon on ice takes away a lot of the good flavors that I love in bourbon, both on the smell and the taste. I feel like it, it kind of cuts it. But it is nice. Sometimes it's a little more refreshing. It's cold. And some people love that flavor you get when you put bourbon on ice. It's just not my favorite. I would recommend trying it. Maybe you love it. And then, you know, drink your whiskey however you want to, is what I say. Make a cocktail out of it. I've been making bourbon sours, and they are pretty delicious. Um, so moving along, getting in to picking up the smelling notes. I feel like people ask me that more than anything. How do you smell all these notes in there when you smell? Well, the first thing I would say is you're going to have to practice. Just a couple times a week, pour you a small sip of something. And really try to get in there and focus and just try to get one. Don't try to get 10 notes. You know what I mean? I can't do that. Just try to get one. And then maybe after a couple of days, you can get two. Another thing that really helped me is this kit my wife bought me. A bourbon nosing kit. You would not have to buy a kit like this. A lot of this stuff you probably just have around your house. But it has all these different containers of different scents like peanut, tobacco, caramel, vanilla, honey. And you smell those 
and then you go to your bourbon and you smell it and see if you can pick up those same hints. And it really did help me a lot as far as distinguishing between like the different kinds of sweetnesses, if that makes sense, like brown sugar versus white sugar versus vanilla versus molasses, just picking up. I could smell that it was sweet, but I was having a hard time distinguishing the different sweet flavors, and that did help me a lot. But like I said, you probably have most of that in your spice cabinet. Um, you know, vanilla, chocolate, you probably have chocolate around your house. I mean, there's all, all kinds of things that you could smell to try to help you pick up those notes in bourbon. But I really do think it's, it's just practice. I think you'll just have to come to it a good bit. Your nose kind of gets used to it, I would say. Another trick I've learned that helps some is when you're smelling it, if you open your mouth just a little, so you're breathing through your nose and your mouth, sometimes it can cut down on the like alcohol, ethanol smell, and you can get more of the uh, notes that you're looking for out of it. So getting into picking your first bottles, if you're new to bourbon and you're just going out there shopping, I would say what I did, and I had pretty good luck with at the beginning, is watching YouTubers or reading reviews and trying to go into the store knowing bottles that people say consistently are good. And, you know, everybody has different tastes, but there's a lot of bottles that pretty much everybody just agrees are good. Starting with those, I'd stay on the lower end of price just because... If you don't know what you like, I don't want you to pay $60, $80, $100 for a bottle and then get home and not like it. So I would probably stay uh, in, you know, down in the 20s because there's a lot of great wh whiskeys, I'm sorry, in that 20 to 30 range or even under 20. There's some great whiskeys, great bourbons and rice. I would stay down there until you really kind of start learning what you like and then maybe move up from there. But I hope this helped y'all. I hope some of you found it helpful. Um, feel free to comment if you have any questions, anything I missed, I'd be happy to answer them. But I think that's it for today. Small Town Bourbon. See you next time.